In yesterday's episode, we were pushing for the Champions League. Unfortunately, our plans got derailed with two losses. We did win the one game against Leicester away from the camera, but it was still two disappointing results. In today's episode, we look to finish off the season in style, and I think we are going to confirm ourselves a Europa League spot. So let's have a look at what happens in the season ender. Welcome to part 10 of Leeds United, Pride of Yorkshire. So as I said in yesterday's episode, we were pushing for our Champions League place and we thought we were in an ideal spot. However, we had a few defeats which kind of derailed us from our objective. And as you can see from the league table, a little preview there, we are no longer able to qualify in a Champions League place. So let's show you what happened to get us to that position. So you can see that after we lost to Man UFC, 4-1. We hosted Liverpool. They came to Ellen Road in an early kickoff. We lost 2-0. We didn't play very well. Liverpool smothered us. They kept the ball really well, moved it about, scored two early goals and ensured that we couldn't get into the game at all. We then bounced back in style when we went on the road to Tottenham. We then won 2-0 and you can see that goals from Click and Adams set us up early and we kind of frustrated Tottenham. Everything pretty much was 50-50. You can see we both had 21 shots. They had slightly more on target. We had a better XG. Possession was about even, 51 to 49. But the football we played was really, really good. And we took our chances when we had them. So that leaves us with two games left in the first Premier League campaign in this save. And we have Burnley on the road and Norwich at home. And we are going to show you exactly what happens in those two games in just a moment. But first, a little look at the league table to see where we are likely to finish. So looking at this, we have a game in hand on Manchester City. But doing quick math, we can see that even if we were to win our last two games, we can only finish the season on 71 points. They have already achieved 72. So we are guaranteed a spot in the Europa League. It's just a case of whether we finish fifth or sixth. Chelsea are a point behind, having played the same amount of games. So hopefully we can consolidate our Europa League spot and a fifth place in the league, which I think will make this a pretty successful season. So let's show you what happens in the first game when we play against Burnley. After the Tottenham game, confidence is high and we are going to look to consolidate our place in the Europa League by winning this game. So the lineup we're going to be putting out against Burnley is Melian in goal, Firpo, Lorente, Ahmed Hozic and Kraft. We have then got Phillips and Bentacor with Rafinha, Click and Adeyemi playing just behind Sesko. So fingers crossed, another three points on the board here will keep Chelsea off of our backs and get us into the final game of the season with a chance of a fifth place finish. The first action then is a throne for Burnley. They play up the line to Vidra, who cuts inside, and Burnley are being allowed to play it around quite nicely. But Phillips intercepts the ball and plays it to Sesko, who knocks it onto Rafinha. He swings the ball out to Adeyemi, takes a touch. Hopefully, he's going to try and beat his man. Cuts it back to Bentacor. He crosses it in. The keeper has parried it. Comes as far as Phillips, pinballing around the penalty area, and carry Adeyemi somehow has smashed it into the far corner, and we get an 11th minute lead which is very pleasing for us from pretty much our first attack of the game. So Bentacor with the cross, Keeper, Pope has pushed it out, Tarkowski hits it, it comes off Phillips and drops into the path of Adahimi, he smashes it into the far corner. A corner then here, and Rafinha is going to swing this ball in, left-footed, goes for the near post, but doesn't get anywhere, and Vidra all of a sudden has found himself all alone in on goal. What a bizarre chance that was. Somehow the ball has gone all the way up and over and Vidra found himself in. Luckily he doesn't take his chance. Pope has the ball in his hands and he's going to play it forwards. It's dealt with well though in the middle of the park and Bentacor plays it to Ahmed Hozic. Him and Lorente exchange a few passes before giving it back to Bentacor. He's now charging forwards. Tries to play it into the path of Sesko. It should have been cut out by Ben Mee. I'm not sure what happens here. I don't really care either because Sesko gets on the ball. Puts it in the back of the net and after 35 minutes 
we now have a 2-0 lead. So let's have a little look what does actually happen here. Bentacor just rolls the ball forward. Me looks like he's got it covered. I don't even know if he touches the ball or if it's a bad pass back. But Sesco gets on it and it's 2-0. A throw in here from Kraft to Adeyemi. He plays it back to Ahmed Hozic. Knocks it to Lorente. Firpo's getting involved. He tries to beat his man down the line. Cuts back though and finds Bentacor and he has been involved in this game so much really has settled in nicely now at the club and we knock it around it comes to Adeyemi he smashes it over the bar that's the last action then of the first half and as you can see we get in with a 2-0 lead we have played really well we've had 10 shots 6 on target and we are playing some really good football uh, Adeyemi and Sesco with goals we're going to just carry on here and see if we can't continue with the momentum that we've built in the first half. A corner then, and Rafinha is going to swing it in. Aims to the near post, and Ahmed Hodzic has scored. It was quite strange. The ball kind of went in slow motion. I'm not too sure what happened. It hit the back of the net. Nobody seemed to celebrate for a while, but the ball definitely goes in. There's Rafinha with the cross. He heads it. It goes in off the underside of the bar, I think. Ah, so it's goal line technology that has given the goal. And that is probably the, well, it's still a rubbish angle, but the first one you can see, goal has been awarded. An attack then for Burnley, and they cross the ball into the box. Dealt with well, though, by the defenders. And the ball is played all the way back to Ahmed Hodzic, who switches it to Kraft, plays it forward to Adeyemi. He's now going to run and take his man on. Gets into the middle of the park. Plays it forward to Sesco. Plays it to Rafinha. What a finish this is. Rafinha with the emphatic goal. Smashed it left footed into the top corner. Pope probably beaten a bit easy. But we're not too fussed about that. It's 4-0 after 65 minutes. So Adeyemi to Sesco. Rafinha smashes it. And that is a brilliant finish to give us a 4-0 lead. 70 minutes on the clock and we're going to make some changes. We want to make sure that the last game of the season we have a full team. So we are going to bring Rene on at right back in place of Booked Kraft. We are also going to bring Adam Hlozek on in place of Karim Adeyemi. And one more change. I think we will bring Robin Cook on in place of Diego Lorente. So let's see what happens. But I think this one's pretty much in the bag. An attack building then for Burnley as they play it around in the middle of the park. Taylor knocks it back to me. Tries to play it forward. Chris Wood is there. Only as far as Phillips though. He plays it to Hlozek. And he gives it to Rene. He's prepared to run up the line here. To see if he tries to swing this in. Instead he cuts it back to Bentacor. Who gives the ball away quite sloppily. And McNeil is now on the attack. Coming down this left hand side. He plays it inside though to Vidra. Thought they were going to give a free kick away as the two players just ghosty through each other. But Taylor has got the ball. He tries to get back to Vidra. We're knocking it around in the box. Melier tries the long ball. Hits it though only to Long. Who is going to start coming back towards us. Gets out near the corner flag. Plays it back to Brownhill. Plays it into Wood. We're knocking it about quite nicely. Chris Wood has the shot. And disappointingly we're not going to get to keep a clean sheet in this one. As his finish goes into the far corner. And the score becomes 4-1. So, stand off them, give them far too much time. Wood sets it up pretty much for himself with the layoff. And as soon as it comes back to him, he's hit it right-footed. It's 4-1. A counter-attack here, I think, where Bentacor is on the ball. Tries to play it to Hlozek, but McNeil intercepts it. And then the ball is lumped long. Cock deals with it and plays it to Rafinha. He gives it to Sesco. Click to Phillips. Ball back in. Sesco's going to beat the keeper there. And he makes it 5-1. Benjamin Sesco has been on fire this season. And certainly in this game, he has really come to the fore. Poor Patrick Bamford really has done nothing wrong. But he's not going to get back in the team when we sign this kid for £8 million in the summer. And Sesco is on fire. There we have it then. 5-1 at full time. And we have really played some superb football in this game. Goals from Adeyemi, Sesko, Ahmed Hodzic, Rafinha and Sesko getting the three points as we look to stamp a claim on that fifth place in the league. I don't really think there's much more to say about that. We played fantastic. 
We just need to replicate it in the next game. So let's jump on in and have a look at how we get on against Norwich in the last game of the season. This is it then, the final game of the Premier League season as we take on Norwich City at Ellen Road. Uh, let's have a little look at this lineup then. So the last lineup for the Premier League season will be Melian Goal, Firpo, Cock Lorente, and Matthew Zinho getting a call up. You've got Bentacore and Phillips in the middle. Harrison, Click and Rafinha with Sesco up top. So after a successful season, let's see if we can cement fifth place in the Premier League. An attack here building for Norwich that is intercepted by Harrison. Phillips plays the ball back to him. Let's see what Harrison does as he plays it forward to Sesco. The only disappointing thing there is that he hasn't hit the back of the net as Cool makes the save. Half time then in the final Premier League game of the season. This one's been pretty uneventful. We've had a couple of chances and looking at the stats we are dominating the game. Nothing really is turning into goals. So let's see if we can't grab a winner in the second half. A chance then for Norwich it seems as the ball is played into the middle, Zimmerman to Lees Melu. He plays it out wide to Williams. Let's see what he does with the ball. Plays it into Cantwell. He plays it back out to Williams. Somebody needs to try and get the ball here. Billy Gilmore to Norman. Back to Gilmore. Rashika. They're just playing it about with ease. and Nobody's really closing them down. Aarons gets into the box now. Rashika's there. And Cantwell's header goes in off the left-hand post. And it might be heartbreaking the final league game of the season as Todd Cantwell has scored for Norwich. It does seem there that Matthew Zinho has picked up a knock. So we are going to make some changes here. I'm going to bring Shackleton on and give him a game at right back. We are going to bring Adeyemi on for Harrison and swap the wings over. And then I think we are going to give a game to... I'm going to put Adam Hlozek on up front. And give Sesco the rest of the rest of the game off and see if we can do anything. Unfortunately, that was the only chance in the second half, and it means that we end our season with a one 0 loss to Norwich. We have completely outplayed them everywhere, and been football manager, they scored with one of only three shots on target. But we can't complain. We've played some pretty impressive football across the season, and I think if somebody would have offered us a top six finish at the start of the season, we would have snapped their hands off. So let's jump back to the home screen and show you exactly where we're going to finish and we'll outline what's going to come next in the save. That then is the Premier League season complete and as you can see by the table down here we did manage to secure a fifth place finish after all. Let's look at the competitions and go into detail in the Premier League and you can see that we ended up finishing in fifth place by six goals. Finished level on points with Chelsea, which is an achievement in itself. Finished 10 points clear of Leicester, which I believe is a successful season. So a little look through some of the stats here just before we wrap this episode up. Uh, Ronaldo has scored 43 league goals in the Premier League. That is, that's just insane. He is... A massive, I think that's 17 goals ahead of Callum Wilson and 18 ahead of Romelu Lukaku. And that kind of goal scoring prowess is just ridiculous. Uh, you probably can't see it because they, it is just underneath my face down here. But Rafinha finished second in the league with assists. He got 14 assists. So he finished five behind Bruno Fernandes. He finished one ahead of Jaden Sancho. In terms of player of the matches, we've got Benjamin Sesko down there with seven. So, that is the end of our first Premier League campaign as manager of Leeds United. I think that is pretty much a success. So, what we're going to do next is jump forwards into the next episode. We will be looking at the end of season awards, looking at that end of season review, and then outlining what we are going to do moving into the second season. Maybe show off a few transfer targets and see who we have already got lined up. As I said, Sesco's deal will become permanent. He might be going back to Red Bull Salzburg for another player or two as well. So that is the end of season one. The end of season one is upon us then. And as I said, 
we are going to be jumping forward in tomorrow's episode to the end of season review. We're going to break down a little bit more of what happened with the players in terms of goals scored, chances created, the signings and how they were rated by the board and that kind of thing. So if you're at this point of the video and you're still watching, firstly, a big thank you for doing so. Secondly, if you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe and like button, if you haven't already done so, helps the channel out so, so much. And I appreciate all the support and the comments that I've been getting on all of the videos all throughout this save. It has been a real fun experience so far managing Leeds United. So I'm going to wrap this one up and I will be catching you on the next episode, which will be our end of season review.